Okay, so we all know how to propagate bromeliads via the seeds. We also know how to propagate bromeliads via their pups. But did you guys know that you can also propagate bromeliads via their rhizomes? Because yes, indeed, you can. And this is something that is never talked about, and I actually had to discover it on my own. But you guys know that my orchid adventure is always on the case. And in this case, it was proven successful. So today, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So we've had several propagation projects where we've taken bromeliads and propagated their pups. We've also had several projects where we've taken these bromeliads and literally have mounted them right into the tree which these projects actually led me on such a curious adventure to want to discover yet another way to propagate these marvelous and spectacular creatures. You see, when I was clearing out this area right here because it was filled with so many bromeliads, I discovered such a neat way in which bromeliads actually grow and spread themselves. And in actual reality, they have such a rhizomatic nature in which they grow. And guys, I don't even know if rhizomatic is a word. I have a tendency to make stuff up as I go. So if it's not a word, bear with me. What I'm talking about is how it grows via their rhizomes just spreading and branching out and when I did discover just how rhizomatic there's that word again these bromeliads really were I had to go back to the nature of how rhizomes work because what rhizomes are are basically tuberous roots if you will that spread their plantlets about and that's basically what these bromeliads are doing. So knowing how rhizomes work and then discovering that our bromeliads actually grow in the same manner, I wanted to see if we could propagate these bromeliads just simply using the rhizomes. And about two months later, guys, using an Acmea rhizome and also some Bilbergias, look at there. I was actually capable of taking the rhizomes and propagating these bromeliads right here. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so here we are and this is actually the rhizome that we'll be cutting back. As you can see right here, this bromeliad mama is dying away, so there's really no need to keep her on. And we're gonna cut this section using a handy dandy shear right here or clippers. There it goes. And now I simply inspect the entire rhizome to make sure that this rhizome is viable for propagation. And as you can see right there, it is fleshy and it is alive. It's not dried out or rotted. So yes, this is a viable rhizome that we can use for propagation. Now, if you've seen my other video where we actually showed you dying mama that we kept on life support for the sake of producing even more pups, well, in this case, I can really opt to keep her on, but for the sake of having more room within our propagation terrarium, we're gonna go ahead and cut her loose. And if you guys didn't see that video, shame on you, but you can watch it right now by clicking on the link right here. It'll take you right to the video. And we're basically going to cut right where the rhizome starts. Right there, done, that easy. And all there is left to do now is simply clean this off. We're gonna cut back some of these bristly roots right here. There's no need in attracting any mildew or fungus. So we're gonna cut that off. We're gonna disinfect it. We're gonna allow this to actually dry out for a complete week because we want the wound sealed and healed before we go ahead and put it in our propagation terrarium. And just as a side note, I did wanna let you guys know that you can actually cut this in segments. I would actually cut this in half if you wanted to have smaller pieces. Now, I would advise you don't cut it too small because by cutting it too small, you may not have sufficient energy within the rhizome to go ahead and grow the new growth. So yeah, not too small, but you are capable of cutting this into smaller pieces. And once you've allowed the rhizome to dry out for an entire week and you've inspected it and it is dried and sealed, then you can go ahead and start the propagation process. 
and we'll do that by taking moistened sphagnum moss and also a clear see-through container this one is made out of plastic but you can also use glass and we're gonna go ahead and fill up our container with a moistened sphagnum moss just like that easy as pie and then we're gonna take our rhizome and just insert it within the container and sit it firmly within the sphagnum moss and as i stated we're gonna go ahead and seal the deal by placing a lid on top because we want to use this as a propagation terrarium as we have done right here that's going to be capable of creating so much moisture and also good humidity without drenching out or drowning out the actual rhizome so guys all there is left to do now is simply situate this within a brightly lit location but don't put it in direct sunlight because our purpose here is not to bake the rhizome so we want good humidity good moisture but we don't want excessive heat in here so bright indirect light would be great for this terrarium and this is going to sit for about a month or even longer so patience is definitely key in this propagation and what we want to do is keep a close eye definitely monitor this because we don't want any mold or mildew growing in there and if you do notice any type of fungus mildew growth in there I definitely would start this project over and I would disinfect the rhizome clean it up and have a whole new container in sphagnum moss to start again brand new. And if everything goes well in about a month, you will begin to notice a new growth of a nubbin that will come out. And this nubbin will continue to grow and grow and grow. And in about two to three months, you should have one about this size. And once the roots start to grow, you can go ahead and pot it up. The bromeliad will actually be only about an inch or two when it'll be ready to be potted. So let's check out the goodies that we have in here. These are the rhizomes that I did propagate. So we're just going to go ahead and take them all out. There you go. Come on. Let's get you out there, little babies. And here they are. Here they are. Look at that. There you go, look at all the little rhizomes that we have with these pups that have grown right out of them. And look, there's an assortment of sizes with the rhizomes. I cut some in smaller segments. Look at that, not that big on this one. We also have this little guy right here. That's a small piece and here's I guess a medium sized piece and this one is the largest piece of rhizome that we have and if we take a close look we will see little roots that are growing see these two white stringy thread pieces well those are the roots so we're gonna go ahead and pot these up today and look at this we even have one more little growth growing on this one and we're gonna pot it up and see if it takes okay guys and here we are as you can see these right here have been potted up and I actually literally potted them up with their rhizomes I feel comfortable enough to go ahead and situate them within the soil based media I think they'll be fine and I know some of you guys may be a little bit concerned for the fact that they are teeny weeny little guys standing about an inch to two inches at the most but as I have stated these have already started growing their roots and once they've rooted up then they are well enough to establish themselves on their own so I believe that these are quite fine. Now, I do have to tell you, I will be closely monitoring these. And these actually have not been potted as I normally regularly would pot my regular plants. Instead, what I did is I lightly potted these up. I did not press hard on the soil at all. I just basically firmed it up so that it'll be situated in place, but I'm not trying to have the soil very compacted at all. What I want here, guys, is I want everything to be light and airy. I want it to be capable of drying out in the regards of knowing that I'm not gonna overwater these and the roots and the plant will not become suffocated. So for about a month, I'm actually going to be spritzing these down very carefully 
and that's the way that I'm going to be watering them. I want them to be evenly moist, but I don't want them to be overly saturated with water. We are not trying to drown these little babies out, so we have to be very cautious in the way that we choose to water them. And that's basically it, guys. Can we get a round of applause for a successful propagation via the rhizome? This has been such an amazing learning lesson for me, guys. Again, I did not even know if this was possible. But guys, I have to tell you, if you never try something new, then how will you ever know? And that is a part of our learning mission. The more that we know, the more that we can grow. And that's definitely my mission and why I share my information with you guys. And I have to tell you that I am so honored and privileged that you would allow me to share my love, my passion, and also my plants with you. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys did learn something new from this video and if you like this video please be sure to like share and also subscribe and make sure you guys turn on that bell notification so you guys will know exactly when I do post a new video also folks please be sure to join me on my Facebook and also my Instagram under my orchid adventures and I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well bye bye for now Mwah.